Honestly, if there's one accessory that always sparks debate when it comes to Macs, it's the display. Between those who just want something affordable to work on, those who absolutely need 5K like on the MacBook, and those wondering if they can repurpose a gaming monitor, it's a real headache. And in 2025, it's even worse. We've never had so many options, 1440p, 4K, 5K, ultra-wide, mini-LED, USB-C, Thunderbolt, and prices ranging from 200 euros to over 2000 euros. Of course, as usual, Apple makes things even more complicated with macOS, which doesn't handle all displays the same way as Windows does. So in this video, I'm going to try to simplify all of that for you. I'll show you the real differences, give you my recommendations screen by screen, and most importantly, help you avoid the pitfalls before you buy. As always, all the links to the monitors I'll be talking about are in the description. As always, everything I'm going to tell you is based on my tests, my experience, and especially my own struggles to find the right monitor. So next, we'll go over the real categories of monitors suitable for a Mac, their advantages, their drawbacks, and most importantly, how to avoid any nasty surprises. Let's start with those who just want a good monitor for work without breaking the bank. 1440p monitors are clearly the recommended entry point for Mac users today because it's the best compromise between price and image quality, especially if you want to stay around two to 300 euros. So what is a 1440p monitor? It's a decent resolution, QHD, suitable for most professional or personal users, with 27-inch screens that work well with macOS scaling. And above all, models that are starting to include some really nice extras like 75, 100, or even 144 hertz refresh rates. So if you're using a MacBook Pro with a 120 hertz ProMotion display, make sure to get at least a 75 or 100 hertz monitor. Otherwise, switching from your MacBook to the external screen will feel a bit choppy. Now, let's be honest. At this price point, there are inevitably some trade-offs. The first compromise, very few USB-C ports. Most of them use HDMI or DisplayPort. If you want the famous one cable setup power, video and USB hub all in one, it's going to be tricky. Second compromise, the image quality is decent, but nothing extraordinary. We're talking about standard SDR with colors that are good enough for web browsing, text or office work, but not necessarily for photo editing or video work. My personal recommendation, and I'll put a link in the description for those interested, is the Dell S2725. It's a 27-inch monitor. It's a QHD screen with a resolution of 1440p. It goes up to a refresh rate of 100 Hz and has a simple, understated design without any gamer-style RGB lighting. And honestly, for the price, it's hard to find anything better for Mac. It's a monitor I've tested that I often recommend, and that avoids a lot of pitfalls at this price point. Once you move past the entry level, you get to what I call the sweet spot, 4K monitors. This is where we really get to the heart of the matter, because honestly, if you have a MacBook Pro, a Mac Studio, or even a Mac Mini, this is often where you find what you're looking for. 4K monitors are the perfect compromise in 2025. They offer a much sharper resolution than 1440p, better compatibility with macOS apps, and above all, a much more pleasant display for text, interfaces, and visuals. Even though scaling on Mac isn't always perfect, it's still the best value for money if you want to work seriously. If you stick with a 27-inch 4K display, that's ideal, because that's what comes closest to the famous pixel-perfect experience on macOS, with a density of about 160 to 170 ppi, which gives you an ultra clean image without having to mess around with scaling. As for the advantages, prices have become affordable, often between 300 and 600 euros. You can easily find USB-C and sometimes even Thunderbolt. The display quality is honestly excellent for advanced office work, development, light video editing or photography. However, some 4K monitors are still limited to 60 Hz. MacOS compatibility isn't always 100% optimized, but in this case, it's very hard to notice and can be negligible. Personally, after my tests, what I recommend in 4K is first, the LG Ultrafine. It's a classic, well-known model with USB-C 90 watts, good color accuracy, and decent quality for semi-professional use. Otherwise, from Dell, there's the U2723 or the U2725, the 2025 version, which is even better. A bit more expensive than the LG, but honestly, very solid. Better connectivity than the LG, USB-C port, built-in USB hub, Ethernet directly on the monitor, and above all, the 2025 version goes up to 120 Hz, so it's perfect to match ProMotion. 
If you're looking for the monitor I would personally use for a MacBook Pro, Mac Studio or Mac Mini, it would clearly be this Dell in the 2025 version. I'll put the link in the description for those who want to check it out directly. And before you jump on just any 4K monitor, make sure it offers USB-C and enough power delivery to charge your MacBook. That way you don't have to buy an extra dock or dedicated charger and it simplifies your setup with a single cable. Now, another category that a lot of people love, ultra-wide monitors. It's kind of a dream for a lot of people in 2025, especially those who want a comfortable work setup. Being able to have two or three apps side by side without ever having to juggle windows, editing video or audio timelines without feeling cramped, or even just doing office work with a panoramic view, it's definitely appealing. And so, with an ultra-wide, you can easily replace two monitors with just one. The comfort for editing, creating, or multitasking is really excellent. And macOS actually handles ultra-wide monitors pretty well, even if it's not perfect everywhere. However, keep in mind that, in general, ultra-wides are still limited to 60 Hz. USB-C options are less common, and there are some unoptimized applications or screenshots that can quickly become a bit of a hassle. Personally, I used ultra-wide monitors for a long time, first 34 inches, then 38, but over time I went back to a more standard screen, simply because I wasn't making full use of the width, and macOS is still more comfortable with a classic format. But be careful, even if you're not into creative work, development, or video editing, it can still be a great option. I'll give you a few ultra-wide models to check out. For example, the LG 34WP is a 34-inch screen with USB-C and 4K. It's an HDR display that really offers excellent value for money. Otherwise, there's the Dell 38, which is 38 inches, offering a larger workspace, a very comprehensive USB hub as well, making it an ideal ultra-wide for professional setups. As always, I've put all the links in the description. So feel free to take a look if you're looking for this type of monitor. All right, now that we've talked about ultra-wides, there's still the topic that always comes up when we talk about Macs, 5K. And here, it's clear that Apple set the bar pretty high with the studio display, and before that, the 5K iMac. As a result, many users think that a Mac deserves nothing less than a 5K display, or else you lose that retina sharpness. But is that really the case in 2025? First, let's be honest. Yes, 5K is still exceptional. If you work in photo editing, graphic design, video, or if you're just extremely sensitive to the sharpness of text and interfaces, 5K will definitely make you happy. The perfect balance between size and resolution gives you the equivalent of an external retina display with a density of around 220 ppi. But be careful, it's not essential for everyone. 27-inch 4K screens are already excellent. And when it comes to 5K in 2025, there are several issues. First, the options are limited. Apart from the studio display, you'll barely find two or three models from Asus or BenQ. They're still quite expensive. Prices often go beyond 1300 or 1500 euros and it easily reaches 2000 euros if you want Apple level finishes. Most are still stuck at 60 Hz with no 120 Hz option for those who want promotion like on the MacBook Pro. And above all, current Macs handle 4K very well, even when slightly zoomed in using macOS scaling without any noticeable loss in visual comfort. I worked for several months with the studio display. Honestly, it's a great monitor. It has a premium build, excellent speakers, a decent webcam, and very good color accuracy. But once I compared it with some well-calibrated 4K monitors or even a recent Dell UltraSharp, I realized that for me, the benefit of 5K didn't necessarily justify paying twice the price. And as a bonus, for those who also work on Windows, and this is important to know the studio display does work, but with a few limitations. Brightness can sometimes be finicky, HDR is missing, and so on. So if you have a real neat photography, graphic design, fine typography, and the budget to match, then 5K is still incredible. But for most of you, a good, well-calibrated 4K monitor with USB-C compatibility will more than do the job for half the price. All right, now that you have the overview, I'm going to try to guide you more concretely. If you may need a web, office work, or development, 4K or even 1440p is enough. If you often use dual screens, maybe consider switching to an ultra-wide it's sometimes simpler than having a second monitor. If you are a creative photo, video, designate at least go for a good 4K monitor or 5K if your budget allows. If you want the perfect combo with a MacBook Pro, get a 4K or 5K monitor with USB-C or Thunderbolt and if possible 120Hz in, you'll be all set. And don't forget, always prioritize monitors that scale well for macOS, otherwise you might end up hating your work. I've put links below the video to monitors for each scenario, tested and approved. There you go, now you know how to choose the right Mac display in 2025. It's not just about specs, it's mainly a matter of comfort and compatibility with macOS. If you want me to make an even more in-depth guide with Mac and monitor setups for every budget, let me know in the comments, subscribe, and as always, stay curious. See you next time.